Is the Atreides ready? Phaedrotha called, using the words of the ancient Canley ritual. Paul chose to answer him in the Fremen way. May thy knife chip and shatter. Frank Herbert's Dune Saga presents a large assembly of diverse, multifaceted characters whose stories intricately convey the author's various complex themes. The story of Dune showcases the rise of a hero as we follow the journey of Paul Atreides. However, the path of another influential figure, Fade Rotha of the rival House Harkonnen, stands as a dark reflection of Paul's character arc whose villainous nature provides a contrast to the noble qualities in the young Atreides' heir. In this video, I'd like to examine these two powerful characters leading up to their epic clash, and how their dynamic contributes to the rich mythology of the Dune saga. Spoiler warning if you are unfamiliar with Frank Herbert's Dune. Despite being arch-rivals, Paul Atreides and Fade Rotha are similar in many ways. Both are born into nobility, heirs of their respective houses expected to carry on their family's legacy. Paul, who would one day replace his father, Duke Leto Atreides, and Fade Rotha Raban, chosen to succeed his uncle, Baron Vladimir Harkonnen. These young men are also pawns in a larger scheme, their lives predetermined by the manipulations of powerful entities throughout the Imperium. However, both attempt to forge their own paths despite the influence of others. They are each part of a centuries-long breeding program conducted by the Bene Gesserit, intended to produce a super-being known as the Kwisatz Haderach, making their existence a major factor in the Sisterhood's hopes to shape the political landscape. In contrast to Paul, Fade Rotha was raised in an environment characterized by deceit and cruelty. Trained as a gladiator, Fade's life reflects his uncle's insidious influence. His ambition, intelligence, and physical prowess are all directed towards achieving power through manipulation and violence. At one point in the novel, Paul is challenged in a duel to the death by the Fremen Jameis. This is a defining moment in Paul's journey, as he must utilize every bit of his training from his mother and his mentors to survive. He defeats Jameis, having reluctantly seen the Fremen challenge through. This event was significant in Paul's life, as he had never killed anyone before. His mother, Lady Jessica, made sure he felt the full weight of his action by asking how it felt to be a killer. Paul gave way to tears at the funeral ceremony of Jameis, citing that the Fremen warrior taught him that when you kill, you pay for it, indicating the heavy burden he now carried. In stark contrast to this moment, Fade Rotha, in celebration of his 17th birthday and his official status as Baron Harkonnen's chosen heir, killed his 100th slave gladiator. As the duel commences, it becomes clear that though Fade Rotha is a fearsome warrior, in actuality, what makes him so lethal is his devious nature. True to his Harkonnen upbringing, Fade never fights fair making sure he has several advantages over his opponent. One of these advantages was a key word which had been implanted in the slave gladiator's subconscious mind that when spoken would immobilize his muscles. Though Fade's usual opponents were gripped with drug-induced terror, in this particular fight he faced a clear-headed, highly trained Atreides soldier. Fade accepted this risk as part of a calculated move to quicken the path to his succession of House Harkonnen. He ended up using every advantage he had over his opponent in order to achieve victory, including switching the traditionally poison-tipped blade to his other hand. The Harkonnen resolved to give those in attendance a show the likes of which they'd never seen, ensuring that all in the audience would remember that day and know to fear him whenever he eventually became Baron. These pivotal moments, perhaps more than any others, demonstrate several points of contrast between the diverging lives of Paul and Fade. The upbringing, choices, and influences surrounding the Atreides and Harkonnen heirs set them on drastically different paths, yet they are both destined to be hailed as saviors to the Fremen. Initially a young noble being groomed for a leadership role, Throughout the course of Dune, Paul experiences a series of trials and transformations that elevate him to a status akin to a messiah. Meanwhile, the Baron's schemes center heavily around his nephew Fade, who is considered the ideal heir due to his intelligence and charisma. 
which starkly contrasts to the brutish tendencies of Fade's older brother, Glossu Beast Raban. After the people of Arrakis had been subjected to Glossu's oppressive rule, Fade Ratha was intended to be introduced as a savior in the eyes of the planet's inhabitants. As their journeys continue, the differences in these two would-be heirs become even more pronounced. Paul's rigorous training, coupled with an ability to embrace change and hardship, enables him to adapt to life among the Fremen, and eventually, to walk the destined path that leads him to religious and political supremacy. Paul's experiences also afford him an understanding of his prescient abilities, allowing him to see a broader picture of the universe and the potential paths that lie before him. On the other hand, Faye's ruthless ambition and reckless bravado often blinds him, making him vulnerable to manipulation and consequently driving him toward his downfall. The climax of the novel brings the two characters face to face in a duel to the death, in a symbolic representation of their contrasting paths, Paul fights with the sacred Chris knife, embodying his commitment to the Fremen and their traditions. Paul is made aware of the Bene Gesserit conditioning Fade Ratha had likely received, enabling him to speak a key word, rendering Fade immobile and vulnerable to a lethal strike. However, Paul resolves not to use any such advantage, other than the natural upper hand Fade's overconfidence would grant him. Conversely, Fade's penchant for using whatever advantage he has at his disposal to win is well known. Every bit the product of a Harkonnen upbringing, Fade Ratha is treacherous, relying on tricks within tricks. Not only does Fade fight with a poison-laced blade to slow the muscles of his opponent, but on his person he's also secretly equipped with a poisoned flip dart, a flagrant disregard for the formal rules of their canly sanctioned duel. This deceit is emblematic of his contempt and disdain for honor and tradition. Paul's defiant refusal to resort to similar trickery was born out of his desire not to owe anyone else for his victory over the last vestige of House Harkonnen. Even though he came close to death, he defeated his Harkonnen rival with honor, bringing an end to their family's long-standing feud. While the following books would further emphasize the pitfalls of Paul's rise to power and the dangers of blindly following charismatic leaders, Fade's death at the hands of Paul in Dune emerges as a symbol of triumph over the Harkonnen's ruthless governance and unchecked ambition. Ultimately, the clash between Paul Atreides and Fade Ratha stands as a testament to the transformative power of adaptability and the enduring importance of justice, integrity, and honor against the perils of succumbing to greed and corruption. But I'm curious to know what you think of the contrast and final confrontation between Paul Atreides and Fade Ratha of House Harkonnen. Are there any comparisons between their individual characteristics or elements of their backgrounds that stand out to you? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe for more Dune and other sci-fi and fantasy news and lore. Thank you all so much for your support. And as always, have a very nerdy day.